doing a lot of things. You get, I mean, for a big guy getting up and down the floor the way he did and the way that you played defense, you look back on it now. Uh, and defense, as Coach Tark told me, was the name of the game. He had 671 points, a new NCAA tournament scoring record. But defense was, was king on the running Rebels, even though you guys ran up and down the floor. Like Coach Tark said, all the players were so unselfish. We shared the basketball with each other, played defense, and I look at it, if you didn't play defense, you was on the bench. Mm -hmm. And you know, the defense created our offense, and, and that's what we was about. Yeah. You want to say something, Larry? Yes, I'm hearing all this, Larry, there's no, I can't have it. I can't have it. I've seen these games, man. I've, you know, I've come back, come here, and, and then sometime on ESPN. And what you do with tapes, you focus on yourself, right? when you watch tapes, these dudes carried me. They absolutely carried me, man. This dude, this dude, they carried me. I'm telling you, I watched that, and like Coach, and Greg had it right when we started. I was about in the top, I was definitely in the top six as far as defensive players on this team. You know what I mean? And and every time, every time when we pressing defense, this man pressing defense, it was my man that would get the outlet pass. So all the thing I had to do on this team really, man, would get the ball in the paint and score. And I didn't have to, I couldn't pass it to myself. These guys passed it to me. And if he wasn't hitting the jumper and he wasn't hitting the jumper, they was going to sag down in the paint. When I watch, I'm telling you, I go back and I watch these championship game and all that, man, I had the easiest job on this team. Well, let's watch that right now. We're going to see Larry Johnson, it, what Larry Johnson liked to do, give the ball up. We're going to look at some of this video now. And again, just react because some of the stuff is pretty, pretty darn good, as you guys know. We'll, go, we'll start with Ohio State. This was at the John M. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City early in the rounds of the NCAA tournament. And this is Larry Johnson following a miss. And what he does. Stacy Sianovic got it. And there's Moses, the loudest player in all of college yeah. basketball. But that, that was textbook running Rebel basketball, though. Again, it was all predicated on the defense. We controlled the defensive backboard. Our wings ran the floor. And the big that didn't get it filled the lane. That, and that's a huge advantage to have when you can get easy scores like that against good defense. Yeah, and that's, again, sharing the ball. But th th this sequence here, it's kind of back and forth as Ohio State's running with you a little bit. Not a lot of made shots, but, again, defense forcing bad shots. Talk about what you're seeing here. Well, a lot of help defense, you know, and, and guys getting out again, filling the lane and just trying to make plays. They, they play good defense. That was one of the, probably our toughest game, them and Ball State, in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, they had some good athletes, man. They had men on their team. They played real hard. They played real yeah, hard. James Jackson. <clears throat> Jimmy Jackson on that team. Chris Gent was a great shooter yeah. on that team. Yeah. That was all. That's, that's money there. That's mm -hmm. money there. Man. Anderson Hunt just filling it up, ending that's that little money. run. Was that kind of your attitude at times when, if things were going back and forth, getting a little scrambly? Just give me the ball. I'll end it, and let's go back and play defense. <laughs> no, a few people could do that. Whoever Greg passed the ball to, whether it was Stace on the, on the left wing or me on the right wing, Somebody was going to do something with it. Like, I, like Dave said, that was our job. Now what about this one on defense? Watch this play by Anderson Hunt, number 12. Greg Anthony's in the picture. Oh, yeah, them guys. Jump ball. Yeah. Jump ball, Greg. Why? Well, they didn't get a lot of blocks throughout the whole year. So. <laughs> no, we, we, to get two blocks on one. We got steals. We weren't getting yeah, a lot of blocks. They didn't get a lot of blocks. Guys, but that was yeah. great, great effort, though, by us to get back. And, and that's really true. That's one thing. People don't appreciate how, and I don't think any of us appreciated how much coach focused on defense that we got to UNLV. Because it, I'll never forget my sophomore year after my regular, I wanted to quit because I didn't think I could physically do that. I was 19 years old and my knees would hurt. I was wearing knee sleeves, <laughs> but he conditioned us mentally to be able to, to deal with it. And Larry went through it when he first got in. It was well, a, I fell out. That's what you want to say. That's what you want to say. <laughs> but I, I fell, I fell out. But he <laughs> wasn't there. He, he, he couldn't no, take that heat. We never, we never talked about winning the game. All we talked about was getting prepared physically, mentally, emotionally to play as hard as we were capable of playing. And that's what we did. We just played harder than anybody in the country, game in and game out. And I had coaches would come up to me and they would marvel at, at the effort our guys made in every game, on every possession, and that's what made them a great team. Well, Greg was a guy who did something a little different that year because he broke his jaw in the Fresno State game, shows up the next day with a hockey helmet at practice saying, Coach, I'm ready to play. He's got a broken jaw in this next play here. And Greg, kind of describe this for us. 
Well, you know, we, again, we're out competing, as you can see, getting out in the passing lane, looking for deflections, trying to create offense. And here, I just, mm, that I was agree. painful. That hurts now to watch, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'll never forget when Greg broke his jaw, I thought our season was, we were going to struggle a little bit. We had two really big games coming up right back to back. And I thought Greg would be out for several weeks. And our uh, team doctor said that he thought that Greg could maybe play a few minutes each game. But that's it. Greg came back the very next day and, pra and shot around. And the next day he practiced with us. And the third day he's taking charges. I never seen a kid with, with a broken jaw play as hard as Greg did. And he made one of the classic statements I've ever heard on TV. They asked him if it was painful playing with a broken jaw. And he said, yeah, it's very painful. He said, but it's not nearly as painful as having to sit on a bench and watch. I That's thought that was a great statement. That was him. Yeah, oh, well, no, was a lot of that came from Dave. I want to say something about Greg. Uh, when he broke his jaw, Greg is the, he was the general out there. He talked to the guys, communication, and everything went through him. And when he broke his jaw, of course, you know, he loves to talk. <laughs> <laughs> so he couldn't talk for a couple of days. He had to, you know, take this liquids in, and it was killing him he couldn't talk. And we loved it. And we loved it. <laughs> we loved it. That was, that was a couple of days where we could say, okay, we, we don't hear Greg for a couple of days. Right. But just being out there and the mental toughness, Yeah, man. that was, that was something. Well, it's got to be painful for a coach if you got a Larry Johnson on your team to, yeah. to uh, watch him get his fourth foul. And in this game against Ohio State, this is a, a time when Larry picked up the fourth foul with the Buckeyes still hanging around. And Larry, kind of take us through what happened under the basket here. You're coming in the picture now. I'm going to start to back in. Well, again, like you said, those guys was, was some physical guys. Yeah, yeah, that was physical play. Speaking oh, of, you speaking know of what? technical oh, fouls. Yeah, you, hey, 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 listen, I'll say this. Me and Anderson Hunt got into it after this. Me and Hunt got into it. He don't even remember. Me and Hunt got into it. Wow. That's, just, that's just being too hot-headed. No, it ain't. Hey, you know what? Honestly, Larry never said anything to an official on the floor. That's true. So for him to say that to the official, you know that call was questionable. And, and that's in all sincerity because he just never communicated with officials, never, you know, just never had a word. He just played the game. We always felt that we were, we certainly weren't the NC2A's favorite team. <laughs> no, we were not. And we, we always felt we weren't going to get a, any calls. And I think they felt any game they could get a Larry in fall trouble, we were going to have problems. I remember every time Larry would get in fall trouble, we'd put Moses Curry in the game, and Moses would get every rebound. <laughs> every was over. rebound. It was over. Moses was sensational in our drive that year. Absolutely sensational. He was indeed. And, and uh, again, defensively, he, he, he teaming with, with David on the boards were, were remarkable. You got less than a minute to go. Coach, I know you like talking about defense, and here's a, a defensive stop that basically wins it for you, Anderson Hunt finishes up the play, but uh, uh, Anderson, tell me what you saw here. I seen, I seen Larry get the ball, and we, we did that a lot during the year. As soon as he get the ball, I'm gone yeah. on the wing. Yeah. So. I, wanna, I wanna go back on, on the big guys just rebounding. Once the big guys rebound inside, it was just like, you gotta get rid of the basketball. You know, we have the run and gun style. Most of the time you see big guys get the rebound and they hold and they look around mm -hmm. the guards like, give me the ball. Once the big guys got the rebound, it was gone. And we, we used to run a play where we uh, do something like an early up play. Instead of giving to the point guard, sometimes we send it further up the court to, you know, attack the defense. And 